What we are going to focus on today is uh, promotional art, kind of like the more marketing side of uh, using Invoke and how you can get some of those types of assets created using the tool. Um, so that's what we'll do today. We'll jump in. One thing that I typically like to call out when we talk about more of the promotional arts or, or kind of like that, that type of creative marketing is just like with really a, a number of the, the use cases from a professional perspective, you are better off when you're doing this in kind of like a, like a layered way in Photoshop and, and seeing Invoke as a way of creating those layers, as a way of kind of composing different elements of that. And so that's the approach that I'm gonna take today. I'm gonna kind of talk about, you know, layering and kind of how you might create something from back to front and kind of have these pieces. One thing that I'm not gonna do is I won't switch back and forth between Invoke and Photoshop and, and show you that whole workflow. Although if you're interested in that type of workflow, make sure to put some notes in the, the chat or if you're watching this after the fact in the comments, um, because I'm always looking for an excuse to like uh, get like a Wacom tablet and start to, to interact with, with Photoshop a little bit more and show that full workflow. Uh, but, but today we'll focus primarily on uh, using something directly in Invoke, and we'll just kind of play around on the canvas with creating more of a scene or creating more of that type of like narrative marketing uh, thing that you might expect. Um, so that's what we'll do today. We'll jump in. Um, does anybody have, and this is always where things get really fun for me because people throw out wild suggestions and make my life very difficult, um, but we'll do it anyways. Does anyone have like a theme or a concept for what type of promotional marketing materials we're going to be creating today. Somebody said a new digital wallpaper. Okay, cool. Uh, this, that's a cool asset, right? It's cool content. If you were making a, you know, any type of, of game or movie, you know, putting out wallpapers is always a fun, uh, fun thing to do. Cool. How about this? Uh, digital wallpaper type marketing asset, right? You, kind of have content marketing out there for people to use. This is probably art or some type of, you know, like new character splash image in a game. Um, we're going to do a near future soldier character. So a little bit more of that kind of like sci-fi ish adjacent vibe. Uh, and it is going to be in motion. So there's going to be some kind of like dynamic element to this that we're going to want to to do. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get our base image. And again, I kind of mentioned that we, we kind of want to think about this as what is the background and what are we like layering it on top of? And so if I'm thinking about like a near future soldier character, um, I probably either have like a, a battle scene or like I've got either a battle scene in the background, they're like dynamically moving on the battle scene, or it's a little bit more like probably steel, like carbon fiber background. It's a little bit blurry. It's a little bit more like uh, a surface for the character to sit on top of. Um, I think that I'm going to do, I'm going to try a battle scene. Um, it's going to be a little bit, I'll show you why it gets a little bit hairy when you do a battle scene, because it's going to try to compose like a, a bunch of people um, on there, but we'll we'll do it anyways. Um, we'll do a, a battlefield, a fire, and sci-fi vehicles, and distant sci-fi vehicles, backdrop, and background, uh, theme, and then I'm going to use a embedding that I created uh, called synth art for the style. And then I'm going to do, um, I'm going to try to eliminate any type of like too, too many characters on the screen. So I'm putting like crowd, clutter, uh, portrait. I don't want, I don't want this to be any, anything like that. Um, so let me do a three to aspect ratio. And we'll go ahead and 
uh, just invoke that. And we'll see what we get. I might, I might do uh, another group as well. Okay, so this is maybe okay. It's, it's a little bit more like daytime desert than I was really like hoping for. Um, yeah, this is like a little bit less futuristic than I'm in sort of mood to paint. Um, so we'll do uh, sci-fi, futuristic, uh, and maybe vehicles is not the right term here. We'll do like um, armored. It's it is a space speeder, and then I also want to have this be a little bit more of like a nighttime scene. Uh, nighttime scene, hero obscuro. This is also where. Um, there's an offset war that you can download that came with SDXL. And what it does is if you add it at a really low strength, it's really good at kind of creating this type of like more dynamic scene. And so maybe we'll use that um, and see what we get there. Uh, it's probably nighttime version or anything like that, but we'll see what we get without the correct spelling. Uh, It's a little bit closer than I was hoping for as far as like scene scene goes, but we can probably live with it. Um, yeah, it's like very, very close up. It's not really like a background and it's really focused on um, it's really focused on this like individual speeder. So let me think, how do I want to do this? Maybe we'll, maybe this is kind of the, the challenge that we want uh, here is we're going to take the speeder out because it's probably getting too confused. We'll just do a battlefield and see if we can get the background. Again, this kind of goes back to if you really want to compose a scene, uh, doing that with layers is a much better tactic than trying to do it all at once in a single shot generation. Um, this is an interesting one because it looks like there's like a cat cow lion over here on the left side. Uh, it's very strange. Um, but if you do this in layers, you can really choose where things are going to be inside of the scene. Um, and I think that'll be, that'll be good. This is like an interesting battlefield. It's like some mountain that's on fire with like a bomb that's gone off. Not like, I don't hate that, but I think it probably is a little bit excessive uh, for, for our background. Um, we'll maybe tone down the fire a little bit. Uh, I might need to say specifically like futuristic uh, outskirts of a city. Uh, space city. I'm looking for, for something a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more futuristic, not kind of like, you know, in the jungle. It's more like the cityscape, more like uh, compositional stuff inside of the prompt as well. A like um, on the ground shot of a battlefield. Think about a fire a little bit. This is like this is good because we're kind of exploring what the background is going to be. I do like this one. It's like a cool city, but it's not what I'm looking for. And this is typically what happens when you get any type of scene. And this is why I try to avoid um, putting like people in the images. You get like some person that's looking out over this like this landscape. Um, I definitely have eliminated a lot of like the crowd and the clutter. Um, this one's okay. I think we'll take this. We'll take this to be the canvas and play around with it a little bit. Um, 
so now we've got kind of like the background. Um, yeah, someone's someone's putting in destruction works well, abandoned futuristic battlefields. Those those are all good ideas. Um, I I think that we'll we'll play around with what we've got here. Um, we we could. I'll try destruction. I'll try destruction because I think that's like uh, an interesting one. Uh, destruction. Abandoned. Battlefield of destruction. That hopefully gives us a good kind of like that way we don't have to go in and compose in all of like the you know dis destruction itself, all of the broken vehicles and stuff like that. Um, if it'll give us some. So this is a pretty cool as well. And this is not Euler, this is DPM to MSDD. Yeah, you know, I'm just still I'm still this is kind of a cool like sci-fi background though. I do like that. Um, let's see, do I like that one better or this one better? We could probably we could probably make this one a little bit more destructive. So we'll take this one with him. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of like eliminate this character because I don't want that character there. Um, we'll figure out some other way of getting a character in here. Uh, maybe the first thing I might try to do is like create some fire, so I'm just going to do um, kind of a bigger block of reds and oranges here, just to kind of give it some suggestion, and maybe do some more white highlights. And then uh, we'll do an explosion, a ground shot of the next kind of battlefield, and we'll turn this to like 0.6 and see what we get here. Uh, so we want some kind of like dynamic background here. Uh, turn that strength up. So I'm going to turn this up to 0.75. Yeah, I'll, I'll take care of this later. I'm actually probably going to somebody. Somebody, sorry, if you can't read the chat. Somebody called out that I need to like mask over where I drew, and I will. I'm I just may draw over that with the actual character that's going to be in the front of the scene, um, and so that's why I haven't done that yet. Um, but yeah, this gives us a little bit of an explosion, gives us some of that lighting um, from the explosion, which is nice. Um, I like this one better. It looks a little bit more dynamic. And what I might do, since I've got that explosion now, is I may take some of these areas around it. It, it looks pretty good as is, but I kind of just want to let it imagine some of the lighting here. So I'm going to take this, decrease the denoising strength a little bit, and this should kind of like really blend in a lot of the lighting well um, with this kind of explosion that's happening. So we've got a little bit more of this kind of like uh, explosion happening on the side of this building and some of the highlights kind of extend up and down to parts and pieces that are on this, uh, this building. I think I like this one the best, though. Uh, this looks good. All right, so we've got this kind of like explosion in the background. It looks pretty nice. Now, what I would probably do if I were to do this as a full process, I'd probably take this out to Photoshop and do some blurring. Right, so I'd blur some of the background. I'd kind of create that little like depth of focus type look with the character that's going to be in front. Um, obviously, we're not going to go back and forth and spend the time to do that right now. But if I were thinking about this, this would be a background, and I'd kind of use some of those blur techniques to create that layered approach. Um, but now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my box touches the bottom of this section. And we're going to try to figure out how to get our character to kind of um, have this, this more dynamic look to it. Now, one of the easiest ways, um, I, I don't have this 
installed, but, you know, just kind of like thinking about ways that I, tools that I would want if I were to be doing this on a regular basis, what would I want to have? I would probably want to train an embedding around different poses, stuff that's like more dynamic so that I can specifically use that embedding to prompt. Uh, later today, uh, which is from a time perspective, I don't know if this video is going to come out after I post the training video, but I'll go through training, um, invoke training. Uh, as there's a repo that we have where you can actually train both embeddings and concept models locally on your machine. I'll be talking about using it to train embeddings. And embeddings are really cool because you can kind of target very specifically that concept you want to prompt for, but maybe don't know the words to describe. And you can kind of use that as a tool. What, I, what I'd likely do is create a more like dynamic pose embedding so that I can kind of use that as a, as a tool. I don't have that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw it in. Um, somebody did call out that we could use open pose and we certainly could do that. Um, Open pose allows you as a control net to kind of have a character that's posed a certain way. That would work well as well if you've got poses that you want to use. In this case, I'm just going to draw it in manually. And that's probably going to work less well than if I had an embedding or an open pose piece. But I think it'll give you some ideas for how you can do this stuff. So we'll maybe have his armor be like a, a red, a reddish hue. And I'm going to kind of like draw in the base of this here and he's going to be like a little bit broad shouldered and have his arms out he's going to have a helmet and i'll come in and add some more like depth to this um when you're brushing in something like this you want to add in what i would what i think about when i'm thinking of this is the prompt is basically looking for anchors inside of the image to latch onto for what areas of the image that word should allocate its attention towards, right? So if I've got explosion in the prompt, when it's running image to image, it's gonna see this block in the back and that's where most of the attention is gonna kind of latch onto. It's basically saying like, oh, that's where the explosion is, right? It's like over there. We're going to be releasing some tools in the, in the coming weeks that allow for like regional prompting. And that's like very direct, explicit control of this is where this thing is in the image. But when you're passing in an image to image um, base, like we are doing here, it's, it's useful to have these kind of anchors that map to where in the prompt it should be thinking things go. And in this case, we're going to have, we're going to change our prompt to um, like a red, armored, futuristic, uh, soldier, uh, like red, weighted, steel, uh, markings, and uh, arms extended with uh, pistols, dynamic pose, or something like that. I'm just throwing words out. So what, what if, how do we, provide anchors for it to understand where things are. Well, part of that is if you are um, passing in this base image, it having context for where shadows are and kind of like depth of this, this character, where are the arms, where's the head, any kind of like anchor points that you can provide that give it something to latch onto when it's running through the generation process help. Um, and so I'm going to just kind of like draw in uh, some of these pieces here of like where that might be, uh, and kind of giving some like outlines, um, just kind of suggest suggestions a little bit um, of where this stuff might be. And obviously, if you spend more time uh, than I'm doing, you can provide a lot more of a, a base to work off of um, than I am doing. And then you don't have to have the denoise strength as high. Um, but I'm just kind of rushing this a little bit since we've got so many people here excited and waiting to see stuff happen. Uh, so we kind of got this like you know soldier looking thing, and we're gonna try it out. We don't want to turn the denoising strength too too high. Um, so that might be 
bad, but we're going to need to turn it high enough to overcome my uh, rough sketch of this. Let's see if this works. This is like definitely more, more rough. Okay, well, it actually did it facing the other way, which looks kind of cool. It's just, just a little bit different than what we were going for. Uh, Yeah, this is more of the angle we were looking at, right? Um, so we've got this like character, he's got his arms out. We're gonna need to like work work on this a little bit, but we can iterate on it. Um, if obviously if this were a character that we had a Laura trained on, uh, it'd be a lot easier to prompt around and you know we could put in like a render of this character from the game over the background and then just do an image to image pass so that it like fits in. But we're kind of creating this character from scratch, so you know we're gonna have to like mess around with it and and get it a little closer to what we want. But we've got a good base here. We just need to now fix some of these pieces that don't look as good. Um, so he's got this like bottom here that's way jank. Uh, we're gonna clean that up and we'll put like uh, this like black line there. Uh, and one thing that I'm gonna do is I think this um synth art is giving it a little bit too much of a certain look and i kind of more want a uh, painterly and painted style is brush strokes concept art kind of a little bit too too quick here uh and then we're going to Fix the hand here. And another hand. And then we need this, like these pistols to be a little bit. Maybe pistols isn't the right word because it's kind of got this old, like, six shooter looking thing with um, plasma guns. Plasma guns. Uh, maybe we'll make this, like, black steel and green or something like that. We'll just like draw these in. Create this like thing up here that matches. And we'll draw some like green on it as well. It's always cool. Plasma looking stuff. Cool. And then maybe we'll just reimagine this whole thing and see if we can get it to pick that up. Now, I'm going to turn this off real quick just so that I can maybe draw some thicker lines. I'm noticing that uh, this might blend into the background just a little bit. So I'm just going to give it some, like, again, anchors so it knows where this thing starts and stops. Um, maybe give it a little bit of this on the top. Probably reflecting that light from the explosion or something. Got the, and then we'll turn our mask back on, tighten this mask up a little bit to just the areas that we can change. And then we go and do 0.55 and start there. It's looking a little bit better. Those pistols are starting to form a little bit. Um, we can kind of like iterate on those as well if we want to. Like the helmet on this guy. It's kind of like the torso is still kind of twisted down here, so I'm going to have to, to do some work on that with a little bit of a lower denoising strength. Uh, but we can start to see this is shaping up a little bit more towards what we're looking for. Um, yeah, someone said, uh, they discovered recently that characters holding pistols is not as straightforward as they would hope. Characters holding any kind of weapon, uh, using 
like AI image generation is going to be harder if you're not starting from a sketch. It is so much easier if you're starting from a sketch and you're actually using that as a control. It is a lot harder when you're doing something like this. Um, and that's just the nature of it. I, again, I think if we were to do a full kind of like creative session and, may, and maybe in the future, um, we will, we'll have like one of the artists that we work with. Cause like, again, I, I'm doing this in an hour. And when you, when you actually work with an artist who's doing this, they're spending like a couple of hours, even using AI, it's like more of a process, right? You're drawing the sketch, you've got that down, you're using that to control the generation and you're kind of composing the piece together. That's more of like the interesting piece to when, you, when you've got actual control over it. I'm kind of like fiddling with some of the, the AI challenges that you run into when you're trying to do things like this, but very much so if you have a sketch and you've kind of got the, the structure that you can control it with, it becomes a lot easier to do things like bow, bows and arrows. Like that's like impossible using a prompt. Um, any kind of like I'm holding a weapon a certain way and it looks good is is typically like um where some of these models fall in a little bit um but you can you can obviously get it get it there with control and as the model technology improves i think it'll be um it'll be good um but we'll take one of these maybe we'll take maybe we'll take this this guy because i like the helmet i think it's like a cool look um I'm going to downplay the red a little bit. It's, before I fix this, I'm just going to give another generation at a little bit of a lower replacement strength, uh, just so that we can see if we can get some variations on this. Um, uh, somebody's asking about Synth Art XL. Uh, is the embed something that I trained for this? Yes, yeah, so the SynthArt XL embedding is something that I trained. Um, it's something that I uh, put together a set of like compositions that I created in Invoke that had a certain style that I liked, that had the composition that I liked, and just kind of like pulled those together in an embedding to be able to prompt for that thing that I had created in the past. Um, it's kind of just like a, a personal shortcut um, if you all are interested in that, I'm happy to share it out. It's not like uh, super secret sauce or anything. It's just something that I, I use um, and I can put it on uh, the model's website. Um, take a look at these two. These guns are a little inconsistent. These actually look cool. Uh, maybe we'll take that. What do I want to do here? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to control uh, for this, I'm going to take a shot of this area here. Actually, maybe I might um, zoom this down a little bit and focus just on this main character. And we'll do our Annie. And what I'm going to do is we'll do this kind of like Annie for 65% of that. I'll keep a lot of the structure, but I'm going to turn the denoising strength up quite a bit. And basically, what I'm doing is I don't want it to reimagine the structure as much. I want to I want to kind of like just have it change some of the details and maybe get a little bit more like depth and color there. But I do want to kind of control it from like reimagining the entire image. So I'm doing a relatively high denoising strength, but I'm controlling the early parts of the generation to keep the structure the same. And that should, oh no, I'm saying video pause. Swap, can you guys see this? No, not just you. Oh. We're still recording, so people who are uh, watching this right now are not, uh, let's see here. Okay. Yeah, people who are watching this after the fact will have a very awkward moment where I had technical difficulties and everyone who's watching this live can hopefully now see my screen again. So we're back. Um, effectively what I was talking about, uh, controlling the structure using the control nut uh, early on in the generation, but turning the denoising strength up so that we can get a little bit more like color variation. In depth. Um, so obviously we've got more of that color variation here than we had before. It's got a little bit more depth but we've kept the same structure. 
Um, so do this maybe one more time. Uh, and maybe I'll decrease the weight here a little bit and we'll just try it again. We'll see, we'll see if we can get some, some other variations here. I, I like it generally, but there's some areas that we'll need to kind of like poke around and fix. I do like this kind of like vibe that's coming out of the helmet though. It's kind of cool. Um, I might go in and do some like tweaking on it. It's coming along. It's coming along. We're getting there. We are getting there. Um, as someone said, our generation has become too real. The explosion took out my energy. That's, that's right. Uh, something that I really like here is there's kind of like this like light effect here that's coming off the gun, which is super cool. Um, I like the lighting on this one a little bit better. Let's, we'll fiddle around with this. Um, so now we've got you know like our character. Probably want to fiddle around with this mask a little bit. Um, mostly just because it's taken on this like red red color and we probably want this to be something else. Um, so maybe we'll give it this like light blue color here. Uh, just to get some like color variation. Right. And we can do some cool things like you know like emphasize elements of this that we like. So I'm gonna like draw this line here and maybe draw some like shapes on the side. Uh, so we can kind of like define the structure of this a little bit more. And what else do we want to add some emphasis to? Add some more of this because they look pretty cool. Um, compositionally similar. Right. I'm going to do this. Uh, change this to a close up of a. Let's take out red because I don't really need that. The color is going to control for that. Uh, we'll take out our control nut. Uh, I am going to select our mask here. Our helmet. Again, I've mentioned this before, but I like to think of everything as like puzzle pieces. That way it seamlessly kind of composes together. We're going to turn our denoising strength down to about 0.6. We've got some variations there. Uh, let's see. Detail on that guy. <laughs> Bowen says needs more heads on spikes for the original Doom pose. Um, and maybe maybe people caught that, that that was kind of the pose I was going for is that like uh, original Doom pose where he's like standing on the mountain with demons coming. Uh, that's cool. Oh, this one's got kind of got like these eyes here that makes it look a little bit a little bit too Iron Manish for me. I like this kind of like this helmet, so we'll take that. Kind of move forward with that that piece. Um, so the question is, do we like these guns? And the answer is no. We want more green. Lost a little bit of that green. So I'm gonna put that back in. Um, just draw that right here. Hands are a little bit squirrely. I'm not gonna get too. Finalize this effectively. Uh, put green there. Put green here. And maybe even need to, like, very lightly put something over this to really emphasize that it's um, fire. All right, let's do a control map for this. It's okay. Um, take it, take it. 
fiddle around with our strengths there. Keeping it somewhat high strength uh, from a weight perspective, and it's going to kind of cover that first half of the image generation process. Uh, and then we will, yeah, we'll just go ahead and take these guns and cover this whole first section of the arm on both of these. Um, see what we get uh, in puzzle pieces. We're kind of regenerating these arms, and maybe that kind of first joint. And we keep it at noise and strength of 0.6. Uh, people are calling for more violence uh, and skulls, spikes, demons. Definitely would make it more more doomish. Doomish. Might need to turn up the denoising strength there a little bit. Let's do that. Let's turn that up and then do another two. Have these to compare and see what happens early versus late in the denoising process. Uh, so one, somebody's got a question. One off the top question, the generation preview thing, maybe it's super fast BAE decoding, but it feels like there might be better uh, better color matching on the output. Uh, and then somebody called out like the old image flash for a second uh, instead of freezing the last preview frame. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, I, you, you don't have to apologize for the wording. I, I kind of got the meaning from it. Um, there is a, a little bit of a technical like flicker when you see the old image. And that's something that we've kind of looked at in our, we have some ideas for how to uh, address, um, but those will be future, future things. So I think of these, this one like looks pretty good, but we've got to maybe regenerate this one more time. And, Take off the control net, and we'll just do a little bit of a lower denoising strength. And that'll kind of give us this generated guns. Yeah, the the color correction piece. Um, the color correction piece is an element that we could add in. It it's basically you just lose a little bit of control when you do that. But. I think we're we're constantly improving the canvas. So with 4.0, you'll notice that this canvas denoising process is actually not doing a coherence pass anymore. So previously we were doing two a two-step process to generate and compose that back in. Now it's one. And you can thank Dunkaroni for that. He is one of our contributors and like made a really nice um in painting piece. Um was that you know, a little bit too crazy with like some Uzis? I think this is probably our um preferred one, maybe. Yeah, this one's definitely better than the other. Um, I think I might need to do a little bit more work on this pistol. Let's uh, change the backside a little bit. Um, get a close up on these pistols. And then that'll be it for those. Uh, close up of plasma guns. Uh, so those in our hands. Um, yeah, so uh, as I was mentioning with the updates to uh, 4.0, we've got a much better in painting process that is a little bit more um, efficient and also actually does a really cool kind of blending effect, uh, which we call gradient denoising. Um, you might have heard this like referred to, it's not exactly the same, but it's very similar, like soft in painting. Um, but ours is like a little bit more of a bespoke implementation. Um, this one's got a little bit too much, a little bit too much here. It's kind of disconnected, so we need to correct this a little bit. Draw that in. But otherwise, I think we're like doing kind of good on these pistols. Uh, the hands have gotten a little bit funky. 
this is the again downside of not actually just taking this out to Photoshop and fixing some of these things. But reiterating, reiterating the principle. I do think in in the future getting some of the folks that we work with and showing you what they do would be really cool. Um, just because you're able to do this kind of stuff really quickly and switch between Photoshop back and forth it you know, do some really cool stuff. Uh, those those both look futuristic and okay. chunkier. All right, so you know now we've got this kind of asset that we can use. Now I think thinking about ways that this would be maybe more easily handled if you were trying to get this done and you had an existing character that you're trying to create a marketing asset for. Uh, a Alora would be useful, right? If you have Alora trained on the character, you'd be able to prompt for that and it would be trained on what that is the other thing that you can do is if you create the background and you have a render from the game a lot of times like the the rendering itself has a lot of the anchor points i talked about that would make that easy to pose and easy to compose into the marketing materials what you could do is you could take that um model and kind of pose it and pop, pop it out put it in and compose that into like the the background in photoshop and then you can run an image to image process or a control net controlled image to image process over that and have it reimagine that character in a more artistic style. That would give you a lot of the depth and detail of like more of like a hand painted piece. But instead of having to hand paint it from scratch, you've got the rendering, you've got maybe a Laura, and you're able to pull that out and kind of have that transformed into an asset that you can then use. Um, again, you've got sketches that you could do to control that you've got renderings that you could use to control that the benefit of a rendering is that you you also get some of the color aspects so if there's already like texturing that's been done on the asset you've already got that you can kind of compose that in and just do the image to image to get that placed in the scene um you also have you know flexibility of adding in like highlights and stuff like that but that, that can also come from um a high denoising strength with control net. so there's a lot of different ways that you can um, control this. Now, uh, do folks see anything on this image? Okay, somebody's got some questions that they want to ask, so we'll do uh, this piece. Uh, so, compositing section's been updated. We've got our coherence pass and our infill. Uh, the coherence pass, despite its name, is not a second pass. It's more of just how is uh, coherence handled on the edges. How are we? How are we seamlessly putting this new thing into the uh, final asset? So we've got uh, three modes here. One is staged. One is Gaussian blur, and one is a uh, box blur. What staged does is, and that's the default setting, is it creates a blurred mask, and then it progressively, in a gradient, does denoising steps at a smaller and smaller uh, size over the course of the denoising. What that means is like the last piece or that, that the furthest edge from what you have masked gets just slightly altered. And what that does, because you're kind of like, sh it's almost like denoising shader, if you will, it like blends it in. It makes the old image and the new image really fit well together. And because we can do that in the denoising process rather than after the fact, we can now do that in one step. And that is a, a staged, uh, the staged mode for coherence. Um, if you use Gaussian blur or box blur, what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the new image and the old image and just kind of like blur those together and stick them uh, on one another. It's not really modifying the denoising process at all. The edge size controls how much around your uh, drawing actually gets, um, you know, affected. So if I were to select, you know, just this one gun, the denoising process will actually happen 16 pixels outside of this edge for the staged denoising. So 
progressively, the, the furthest pixel, that 16th pixel, is going to get just a little bit of denoising, and it'll progressively get the full strength as you reach the mask. And then everything inside of the mask is getting full strength denoising. Uh, but that edge size can kind of help you determine how much of a blend you want to have. Is it a wide blend or a tiny blend? How much do you, of the image do you want to have potentially changed? Um, the minimum denoising variable says, what is the minimum amount of denoising that I'm going to do? Even if I have a really low percentage denoising uh, strength for the whole thing, how much is like the minimum that we will do at any of these steps? And so that 16th pixel in this case, we want it to have at least X amount of denoising. And then the mask blur again is just how much um, when, you, when we're compositing is, is that mask blur going to uh, be used to... to stick the two images together. So that's kind of the new feature and, and how that works. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's effectively like a single pass when you're generating it. How are we getting to coherence? How is that being managed? Um, and that is that new staged mode. So thanks, thanks for asking the question and, and highlighting some of the features that are coming out with 4.0. Uh, Dunk Aroni, who made that feature, is currently in the audience. So you can ask him questions about that. Um, but very exciting, very cool. Um, so we've got our kind of character wallpaper. He's like shooting his guns. Um, honestly, I don't think the light, the lighting from a plasma gun would sit alongside the top, but you know, I'm going to let it, I'm going to let it slide. Um, just because in this world we can do what we want to do. And this one has, uh, the flashes come out at the very top. Um, does anyone see anything that they want to have changed or edit on this? Uh, do we like our promotional piece? Is there anything that we think is missing from our pr promotional artwork here of our new character, our new space character that we created? I've seen some people typing. While people are typing, maybe I'll do a quick uh, quick piece here. Now, one, one thing that I, I noticed people have commented on in the past is when you're dragging the edge of the bounding box and you see it kind of like big snap to grid, but you've got an image that isn't quite on that edge. What you want to do is you want to hold the shift key because the shift key changes that to a smaller uh, pixel size. So in this case, I can kind of go in and actually match that up to the edges of this specific image. Um, what I may want to do here is I may want to uh, just draw a little bit bigger. Uh, that this is like a leg, right? So we've got another leg over here. It's like standing up straight. And I need to just kind of like regenerate this guy a little bit here. Try two of those. It's got some tiny legs in this one. I think I like this like more turned turned butt look uh, myself personally. I think it looks a little better. I think that's what this one's giving a little bit more of. Then we get to decide do we like yeah that's it that's it right there. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fix this belt. You know, I'm getting like sidetracked here and. Uh, that's all well and good. Uh, create a little bit of a shape. Turn up my opacity because it's really low. Is that up? This up here. Let me focus in just on this guy. And this piece over here is giving us heartburn. Turn this up like the rest of this leg. 
something like that. So we're just really focusing on this belt piece here. Let's see if we get something that we like here. I need to turn and I need to turn the denoising strength a little down to catch some of those details because before I could do a control nut, I had to do it that way. Um, but we may get something that I like without doing that. Let's see. I don't know, I kind of like that actually. I think that looks pretty good. Um, maybe I'll just like touch up some of these other details here real quick while we're while we're at it. Chest piece. Get some more detail in since we're doing the final pass on this. Ooh, he's got like this nice little symbol on this the shoulder. That's like a new narrative piece. Uh, maybe we can actually turn that into a, a cool finishing touch. Uh, somebody's somebody's narrative for this, which we will just like go with, is angry man travels into the future and starts shooting at sand. <laughs> I like that. Um, okay, we're gonna take that, and I'm gonna make this like a cool little sun symbol because I'm a big fan of suns. Triangles there, maybe, maybe a little bit longer on the top. That's cool. Cool, 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 cool. I'm going to see how to prompt for that, right? So we're going to zoom in. Do gray a little bit, the sun. It won't go away. Do a control here. Get some of this. Okay. Get that. And then close up of a futuristic soldier sun emblem symbol. The arm, shoulder, dynamic pose. Some of this stuff probably won't hurt it too much. Uh, like that, and then we'll see. Maybe I'll increase this denoising strength. So we got the control; we can do that. Uh, and we'll see if we get that little symbol on it. Oh no, it's done too much. It's done too much. No, it's fine. Fine, it got what I wanted. That's good. Yeah, there we go. That looks cool. And it just adds a little something to it where you're like, okay, now there's some story here around this, you know, character is part of some faction. There's something to latch on to, which is cool. Uh, do we like that one or that one? I think this one looks more like battle worn. It looks a little bit more like baked into the armor. Uh, so I'm just going to take that that one. Orientation probably that I drew is a little bit off. That's okay. Faults of the artist in this, in this case. Um, so now we've got this kind of like cool looking guy. Uh, we like we like how he looks. And save that out and put it on a postcard. We like it. There we go. We did it. Collectively, it's group effort. Thank you all for the feedback and the suggestions along the way. I think we landed on a pretty cool spot. Uh, yep. Someone said ship it. Ship it. Uh, <laughs> um, cool. Well, we'll call it for today. Uh, thank you all for attending once again. Super fun uh, audience. And we'll continue to do this. Um, like I said, if you watch the video or if you've got ideas and suggestions, uh, feel free to comment or share them in Discord. We'll see you all soon.